Um, sort of at the end of my day here. Um, so I'll try to augment this at a future point in time. Let's try not to mine the imagery. All right, so this is just going through the process of uh, setting API keys and web search module. And is that later? Oh, they're they're doing working on something. <laughs> Let's see if it goes back to it. This part's new. The left there. It's almost, it's almost like the AI is trying to like. Um. Fuck. All right. Fine. I'll I guess I'll read it. Um. Uh, the intended community communicative goal is to establish a, a specific and structured communication protocol for interacting with the language model. This didn't quite. Uh, it's that's it's part of the goal. Um, oh, okay. So that's that is very technical. I, I guess I guess I just went casually just blurt that out at, at, in like a public setting. Um, this protocol aims to ensure clear communication, accurate comprehension, and efficient information processing by defining specific commands within distinct functionalities. Um, that is, again, very technically appropriate. So there is some ambiguity in the invocation timing before, during, and after each bang. Should all commands be used at every time, or are there specific triggers? Specific trigger conditions? Uh, okay. Clear scope of the indexer. So, uh, right, the intention is to um, use this as the system prompt for uh, chat session summarizations. Uh, so every, at this point, 10 messages, um, every 10 messages, these um, text session will be summarized um, by the instructions set here. And so what I'm trying to do is recreate um, the functionality of this particular phrasing that um, sort of creates, it's a taxom taxonomic index of the interaction to reference. So let's see here. Condensed. So, hmm. so right now, the way I see this is um, this actually is sort of um, a redo of lost uh, data that I didn't account for uh, in the latest um, updates. So while it seems like it might do the trick as well. I thoroughly enjoy using uh, computers. So the Anthropic Generator edited uh, what I currently see as sort of um, a useful addendum. Uh, in the sense that uh, if the request offers, or excuse me, involves processing a document or database, it will be provided within the document tags below. So, what are the feature upgrades in the 1.12 version? Uh, so I gotta do something about the font. Like, it's hard to distinguish between the um, headers and the options. Okay. So, okay.
some of the characters it offers as a starting point um, it's a style of, it's a style of writing that i it's, i have a hard time recalling the experience of mm, reminds me of the hardy boys um which i believe was the one where they somehow solved mysteries i i, I don't recall actually absorbing any of the material that's just uh anyways Oh, anyway, yeah, right, right. So, um, however, the structure of how the dialogue is interspersed within, um, uh, you know, aspects of a character definition, um, uh, don't mind me if I seem like I'm jumping around. Um, I'm still sort of um, assessing the added functionality, for example. Data bank. These files will be available for extensions that support attachments. I should probably make a sandwich or something. Like I enjoy the sensation of reading the text out loud, but I could give a fuck about what this is doing. <laughs> uh, it's it's uh, one of my favorite side effects. Uh, this sort of um, divergence in continuity is brought to you by Life Serial. It's pretty bad. Anyways, um, oh, uh, the main point is Life Serial. Oh, uh, uh, those are two other projects that uh, interface. Um, and the length is for nefarious reasons. <laughs> um, sweet. Uh, so now I have to retrace my steps. Why? Shoot, I'll have to get back, back to this feature later. So this is fucking sweet. Um, so as a, a global attachments for information that's available to uh, all the agent personas, uh, you can either upload a file, uh, create a notepad, uh, uh, provide a URL to scrape, a uh, YouTube uh, transcript to scrape, or uh, a web search. And then what I think is the really uh, useful part is the ability to do that for individual uh, persona. I guess agents, characters, um, they're both words designed to denote this sort of uh, object-oriented way of, um, I mean, how, however you would want to phrase that. Um, like this one isn't actually uh this one's kind of classy uh gloria in terms of her um uh image here it's really interesting that with a lot of these applications there is just there is a um this trend tremendously prevalent the um it's like like sexy little anime yeah this and the variety of these things is ridiculous and just that it's just ridiculous um it's like if you remember jessica rabbit uh from uh who framed roger rabbit uh it's that in higher resolution liquid crystal display <laughs> if i was 13 uh again now this would probably be the final year of my life I don't want to be defensive, but it's like it's hard to um, ignore the side effects of certain. Um, oh God, there's there's attachments to all of this, but it's medi medication substance nutrients, right? 
Well, one of the things I'm trying to sort out is after a prolonged period of time, there's uh, I have to reorganize how I uh, store um, the information that I'm trying to take in, uh, otherwise known as otherwise referred to as learning. Um, I have to reorganize that uh, to compensate for some sort of shift in the way the uh, neuron, neur or how do I say? Um, I guess the synaptical bundles interact with each other. Um, that's one of my sort of like, uh, something that I, I definitely uh, would try to spend more time looking into uh, more of the, or some of the, excuse me, some of the neurological neuroscience stuff, the specific jargon that goes along with trying to describe um, where the, you know, how the things map out in the brain. Just not because, you know, I particularly you know, want to go through some trouble, but it's, um, uh, you know, so it, it'd just be really nice. Well, it, it, it kind of already is really nice to find, you know, be able to point out to folks that, yeah, you know, so there are things that you see in here that don't sound or seem right or seem sensible, uh, sensible is the best word here. Uh, and you know, usually, uh, the fault reaction is mostly one of, um, uh, how do I say, um, trust but verify, you know, the sort of like, uh, I don't know, uh, I forgot where I was going with that, to be honest. But so anyways, back to Silly Tab Run, I'm just going to uh, sort of um, casually configure things for a little while. Um, and this will take, I mean, this will take about an hour or so. Uh, so... Um, Eventually, what I hope to do is to take screenshots of each segment, have the language models um, describe what's, uh, you know, what's happening, and that could, you know, that that cuts uh, like so much time off this documentation process. Because, um, well, you know, I guess this is for the sake of uh, uh, posterity. Um, we're looking when I go to when this when I go to put this together put this together later. Um, oh. hmm. So uh, to compensate uh, for uh, the short term memory loss that accompanies, um, uh, yeah. I oh right. Um, uh, inhaling bud uh, smoke. See, it still all sounds stupid to me, but yeah. Smoking, ingesting marijuana, I guess. Um, those words are awkward to put together, but yeah. So, uh, anyways, it's um, so if I don't really focus on the last thing that I just said uh, and quickly move on to something else, I'll also quickly forget the last thing that I just said. And this is a common problem a lot of people have. And I've you know, personally, and I don't want to make a big deal of it because it's <laughs> you know, it's an arduous, uh, balanced journey. Um, you know, there's there's actually ways you can sort of induce that and uh, um, make practices on uh, adapting to the circumstances. Uh, in this case, uh, that being of short-term memory loss is how it's referred to. I don't know if it's a loss as much of it uh, as it is a reallocation of some sorts. There's a, there's a region in my brain right now that is definitely. Um, uh, has shifted its capacity of handling information to another region of the brain, and this has to do with sleep cycles and uh, and things and, and things related to that uh, aspect of um, living, which is a, a huge jump even for me uh, from the content or the context of this. Uh, well, okay, so the reason why I mentioned that is um, by having this uh, sort of structured um, setup where the the um, externalized monologue is, is always being recorded, transcribed, um, if something, boop, you know, takes priority in terms of what to give or allocate attention to, uh, I can then quickly just refer back to this. Um, and now this uh, is something sort of uh, like a stylistic choice. Uh, you know, I'm sure not, you know, I'm sure there is, you know, how do I say shit? Um, I'm gonna, yeah, I'm gonna go back to the last thing. 
And so what, why this applies um, is uh, uh, this is I, I think of people that are treated with a condition uh, referred to as Alzheimer's. Um, you, it's it's quite um, remarkable, uh, is the way I see it, that um, what what these um, what these compensations in um, how do I say uh, neural operations uh, affect the way we sort of go about things. At this point in our in our cultural history, it still isn't really being addressed in the way that uh, shows people that while these things are detrimental in the sense that there is an adaptation that is required, nobody wants to be required to do anything. And then that's just a fact of how the, uh, our biology works. It takes, <laughs> takes a lot to get this going. Um, but yeah, so anyway, um, where 20, 30 years ago, if a person would walk in from one room to another and report that they were unable to recall why they went from one room to another, it was looked at as a sort of um, uh, fear-filled uh, fear, um, event, and which was odd because this was the narrative that I had uh, recorded in my in, in, you know, studies in the various you know, psychologies of this. And then, so in my 30s, when I came to have the experience of that and felt a relief that I can only um, express with that sort of uh, emphasis that uh, lends to the notion that it was like nothing I've, uh, like no relief I have, uh, you know, I had yet to feel up until that point, which is to say a uh, tremendous relief. And I know that sounds, uh, you know, adding that third tremendous, I know that it sort of now it sort of inflates it a little beyond what it, you know, what it, the feeling was. Um, but it's really meant to, like, highlight that, well, why is it that I saw it as this huge relief and yet the reports from the, the studies uh, sh showed responses of fear and uh, the sort of need to fix a problem where it turns out it's not a problem. It's, um, it's sort of like, um, an, uh, an un, um, an under, uh, assessed and observed feature of the human brain. Now I will definitely add the sort of, you know, preface disclaimer at the end that if you're involved in the day-to-day -day activities of a routine that maintains the structural and functional and fundamental aspects of a society, you probably aren't think, uh, think, thinking about this or um, allocating uh, additional energies to these uh, to this. So uh, it's um, I, I say that because it's sometimes hard to take at face value as just. Uh, you know, here's information. There's really no agenda attached. Besides, we kind of want to hurry up and get you know past this whole uh, unable to really communicate with each other phase of our human development. Um, if you th you know, it's gonna be funny. It's gonna um, it's it's a matter of uh, the near future that we can visually demonstratively uh, show that technically in the course of a day. Um, a good deal of the things that we literally say are uh, just some uh, somehow incorrect, um, and that's a weird way of putting it. But I th I think it's kind of silly and funny. But um, most of the things we say just don't fit in right somehow. It uh, either distorts the reality for the general, uh, you know. I like to refer to ourselves as users of the environment because we are. And if we take away that sort of oh, user, oh, I'm just a lowly, you know, little user, you know, um, I don't have much better advice than the previous generations where I just say, well, I just had to get over that because the opposite is also true. At the same time, neither are true. And that's the quirk of the language that we're trying to, uh, you know, parse out. Um, these paradoxes that aren't really paradoxes, but are just misalignments in how uh, this, the language was structured. Um, you know, is a tree, is a tree, is a tree, does it make it sound? If you said that nowadays, most people would look at you and think you were absolutely uh, maldeficient in some sort of nutrient. 
um, probably poisoned by some sort of uh, a harsher uh, element. Um, but for hundreds of years, these were serious considerations. And the reason why I sort of take, <laughs> it's sort of a flippant stance and I apologize, but it's, um, you know, it's annoying. It's like what happened to Britney Spears. Like she has, you know, she was an athletic, um, how do you say, uh, charismatic, uh, at the time, I guess the phrase is influencer now, it still kind of grates me the wrong way because it's entitled and it's just insulting. But anyways, um, you don't, you don't, you don't call yourself an influencer. It's the most ridiculously grandiose thing, uh, you know, that I... <laughs> It's like, fine, if you're an influencer, then I'm a god. Of, I'm a god of language. I'm a god and master wizard of language. If you're an influencer, then I'm a god. How fucking stupid does that sound? So now that we've all had a good laugh at ourselves, I have to de-trigger myself. <laughs> yeah, it's a, it's a, it's a, a modern-day philosophical conundrum of par parsing these situations uh, using the empathetic uh, nervous system, highlight, highlight, dot, dot, dot research further. Um, yes, uh, if, it, if it were up to me, if I were allowed to be like Hitler for a day, I would make everybody, uh, everybody in the concentration camp, which would include everybody, if it makes everybody feel better, uh, I would include definitely, definitely, um, strongly urged suggestions and possibly better drugs i would just offer better drugs and nicer accommodations uh that's what i wanted that's what i still want by the way so yeah i understand what i, what I understand so moving on um oh so sure parsing uh, parsing uh you know, philosophical and theological you know all that stuff that that, that sort of thing through um the lenses of empathy that that really means that you're spending a lot of your time in this sort of simulation mode where you're self simulating out these scenarios that uh you work through right you ever have that shut up becky conversation with yourself you know what you would have said you know given the opportunity Oh, so, right. <laughs> sure, concentration camps. Right. I think that's kind of funny because what that technically means to me when I don't, uh, when I'm not forced to be raped by the history of which I was not a part of, and I'll never stress that enough, I'll, you know, I will help my damnness to adjust the language so that we don't run into those problems again. But understand problems are in that factoid, relative, abstract sense, relative. So, anyways, moving on. Uh, let's see. Oh, okay. So, uh, what I just said was definitely technically offensive to like 13 or like point, I'm thinking like 0.013% of the population at current. And that really more or less has to do with the resource and uh, spatial, um, how do I say, limited resources basically uh escalation oh fuck it they're killing each other over fucking space and food that's all we really ever fucking do that's just you know uh, ah my god there's there's nothing wrong with this quickly acknowledging that and then saying going okay so they're still murdering murdering each other over uh you know the amount of land and available resources okay sort of kind of makes sense we haven't really synced up the uh information technology uh, that part seems to still be in development, which is good. Can you imagine if it wasn't? Oh, right. So the uh, conflict of, uh, in the that part of the world. Sure. Um, I'm sure it's worse than here. I, uh -huh. Except, oh, right. There is that one area of Chicago when I went underneath the bridge where all those folks were living. Huh. It was, I, it looked a lot like, you know, you know, it looked a lot like what I, what, uh, yeah, everywhere else. <laughs> it's, uh, as soon as we realize that our problems are, sh you know, more shared than, uh, the, the, <laughs> the unfortunate leftover, uh, language of the hippies, uh, movement in the 1860s, right? Uh, right. It's a different kind of audience. Uh, 
All right. Um, okay. So my better half is just entering the space of um, sound perception. So I'm going to appropriately change my tone to a more. So yeah, what was? <laughs> I didn't have a good one. Uh, don't mind me. I'm just trying. To, I'm just self self actualized. Um, Reminds that this reminds me of uh, Kirsten Dunst. It always cracks me up. Mm. Huh. Well, so okay, so the character is certainly uh, a, a version of uh, what uh, I will um, acknowledge as a sort of a behavioral habit of how I engage with the world. And this is important. It sucks, you know. Don't, don't, you know, don't lose sight of the fact that um, you, me, and I, and everyone else. These are words that we need to use to mark perceptions and perspectives. So, okay. So the effect was with this one. Uh, the closer cropped in it was, the more like it could say things or it could phrase things in this very matter-of-fact way. And as opposed to when I do it, at, when it sounds like somebody's just being an asshole, with this image attached to it, 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 it adds the, um, the added um, contextual information that there is uh, some deep thought put behind the, um, uh, any, uh, you know, any of this. And uh, a lot, some of it, some of it can be difficult uh, to take without exception. And all I'm trying to do is defend future arguments that will always end up the same. Oh, that's what you meant. I see. And you know, I'd rather just skip all that. So most of the hair was there, I believe. Yeah, something like that. I always wanted to put on this like bravado hip hop persona, but it's truly uh, coming out of this uh, already sort of. This uh, <laughs> I sound, uh, you know, kind of st just stupid. But anyways, um, so beam mode is a feature in another very handy uh, language model interface application called Big Dash API. I think this fellow, uh, this, uh, I don't know if it, it seems like it's uh, representative of a single person, but that can't be true. Um, I enjoy his um, application of the color and uh, let's say that's a, like a gerbil. And gerbil's like, it seems a little tentative, but definitely wants something. Oh, anyway, sorry. Um, doing that thing again. Oh, there's been changes. I, I can never give this a, a type of advice in full, um, uh, you know, it's not, it's not something I particularly follow. Shit, what did I say? Oh, the, the, the keeping up with constant updates. It's, uh, you know, expect to be disappointed at at least one point in your life. That's just uh, B mode. Oh, B mode. Okay, so B mode allows you to. Uh, so in this case, I am taking a transcript, and um, it's I forget the prompt structure, and it doesn't. Hold on a second. Impromptu. Okay. Um, so the prompt is designed to assess uh, aspects of grammars. I enjoy the way Gemini phrases these analyses, as it always does so in a moderately respectful uh, yet uh, flattering uh, style, uh, which is tremendously beneficial to my overall self-esteem. This transcript showcases a fascinating example of spoken language, rich with nuances that can be analyzed through the lenses of functional, generative, and cognitive grammar. Let's break down some key observations. Functional grammar. Focus on language use. The speaker heavily em emphasizes the doing of language, reflecting on the process of communication and its impact. This is evident in phrases like perfecting the language, express more honestly, and it follows the rules of language. Interpersonal metadiscourse. 
The speaker frequently addresses the listener directly, so you can see here. And what I mean by that, building a conversational rapport and guiding them through the thought process. Markers of purpose and reasoning. The transcript is rife with connectors like so, because, and so, and that's why. Highlighting the speaker's reasoning and connecting ideas explicitly. So the goal there is uh, to, um, um, I guess it's still up for debate as to where in this pipeline process this would be best applied, but it is uh, attempting to shape the responses of the model to um, output the breakdown of its inner monologue. Uh, which uh, early results, which is what we're looking at right uh, right now, uh, it seems to be highly useful for many things, um, which is exciting. So yeah, I I like to think that overall the general tone of the Gemini model. I'm gonna try to see if I can fit this all in one. Uh, shot here, but the uh, response tone of the Gemini model and this uh, voice clone, um, if you're familiar with um, Paul Harvey, it's, um, I think it... Generative it, oh. grammar, sentence structure. The speaker employs a mix of simple and complex sentences, often with embedded clauses. When it occurred to me that it kind of felt silly, this reflects the dynamic nature of their thinking. Word choice. The vocabulary fluctuates. Oh, just uh, just sort of like an um, uh, interjection. When it says the speaker, uh, that also refers to you. It's between technical jargon, JSON metadata structure, Sinatra API, and informal expressions, fussing with, wicked smart, showcasing flexibility, and adapting to the context. Grammatical slips. The transcript contains minor grammatical inconsistencies typical of spoken language, such as fragmented sentences and repetitions. It's, it's really a matter of cognitive grammar, conceptual metaphors. The speaker utilizes metaphors to explain complex concepts like comparing language models to middle school students and describing the programming process as a flow. Mental spaces. The speaker constantly shifts between different topics and levels of abstraction, creating distinct mental spaces for technical details, personal anecdotes, and philosophical musings. Perspective taking. The speaker acknowledges potential interpretations of their language that can sometimes give the impression, demonstrating awareness of how their words might be perceived. Overall impression. The speaker's language reflects a highly analytical and self-aware individual engaged in a complex task. They exhibit a strong command of language, effortlessly switching between technical and informal registers. The frequent digressions and meta-commentary suggest a reflective and deeply engaged mind, constantly seeking to articulate and refine their thoughts. Further research. Analyzing the transcript for specific linguistic features like hedges, intensifiers, and modal verbs could provide further insights into the speaker's confidence, attitude, and communicative goals. Additionally, comparing this sample with other transcripts from the same speaker or within a similar domain could reveal consistent patterns and individual linguistic fingerprints. Uh, so uh, at the end there, uh... Um, I find the additional um, prompting for continued exploration with comparing the sample with other transcripts uh, or within a similar domain, which I think would be the, the best way to approach this. So, um, so for example, this motherfucker. Well, I'm trying to figure that out. Think about the potential for AI to augment and inspire human creativity in exciting ways. By proposing new ideas, making unexpected connections and challenging assumptions, systems like myself could be powerful collaborators in the creative process. It will be fascinating to see how this space evolves and what emerges from the intersection of human and machine intelligence. 
You mentioned that you sort of have a, a way of so making one of the uh, highlights of the beaming feature is that so here this uh, text is being processed by six separate models. I don't know exactly how many it would handle at the same time. However, uh, the Ulamama uh, host is uh, also running on this host. And it, uh, anyways, um, oh right. So, um, so when uh, the options to um, combine, merge, coalesce, otherwise braid the model responses. So, for example, uh, in this first stage, actually, I'll just I'll just restart the processes. Okay, so the first part of the guided response process um, provides a checklist of things to focus on. Um, let's start with that. So, something that uh, I would love input on is, so, that begins the response, the transcript offers a fascinating window in how the speaker uses language. So, obviously, this is constantly referring to uh, myself as, uh, you know, the <laughs> proprietor of the, um, I'll just say, uh, body vessel. <laughs> um, but, you know, so it really needs to be impressed that this transcript offers a fascinating window into how the brain processes language. Now, understand that uh, the way I uh, ended up having to adapt and some choices that I made in, uh, in terms of what I saw value in, uh, it's not that, you know, how do I say, it's... Uh, in, as opposed to mostly a problem, it's mostly a problem in like day-to-day -day life, the way, the way the infrastructure is currently, uh, how do I say, managed. Um, but it's hard telling the, the baby boomer generation that they did a fantastic job at setting up an environment that was suited for their generation. <laughs> And it's terrible, terrible, terrible for their sakes that um, they had no way of realizing that it was really only best for them because their intent was expressed as save it for the children of the future. You can, well, you know, uh, it, it might not be lost on most people that, you know, you can't save it if you're constantly using it. Uh, that's not an advocation, by the way. That's just an observation. Uh, as far as I can see it, and that's is just, you know, personal side, um, you know, it's uh, fine, it's okay the way it is, it can be adapted to, you know, don't, uh, don't go all changing on, you know, but, uh, okay, so where was I? Oh, right, so, right, I use myself as the example because, well, I'm, I'm, the, I'm the case study that I'm most familiar with, uh, <laughs> Uh, it's a very rare occurrence where I'll speak about myself with less insight than I would about speaking about somebody else, if that makes any sense. I would say it took about eight years of um, intensive, uh, subjective, and adapted uh, thought habit conditioning to uh, process the tremendously hurtful and ego-damaging uh, concepts and, and sort of... Um, uh, well, you get the idea. <laughs> and then, so what I'm hoping to encourage as, as well is the continued use of filler, filler language uh, for the speaker uh, or speakers to uh, pause and mark their thoughts so they can better remember them. Uh, this is uh, advice for those who would want to take... Um, Participate, uh, participate in the public uh, political systems uh, in terms of generating content and messages that are 